Well, welcome to another episode of Pizza Class. In today's class, you're going to learn how to make Old Forge style pizza. Old Forge style pizza is a tray based pizza. It's popular in Wilkesbury Scranton area of northeastern Pennsylvania. And it's basically a light and airy uh, but thick dough that's allowed to rise in a pan and then topped very simply with sauce and cheese. The cheese combination is mozzarella and white cheddar and we'll talk about that later but those flavors combine to make a really unique pizza and it's one I think you're going to enjoy. It also I think has ties to the Detroit style pizza. It's made in a very similar fashion so if you wanted to uh, call this a Detroit style pizza you, you could. They're very very similar and the only difference would be in how you top them. So let's talk about equipment and ingredients for this pizza. The first thing is that we have to mention you do need a special pan for this pizza. Here I have a 12 by 17 baking pan. Uh, this is what I use for tray pizzas and this one is, is Teflon coated but you can also buy them just blue steel and allow them to be tempered with uh, seasoned with in the oven. And this pan is about two inches deep. You need the walls to be nice and deep so that you can allow the dough to rise in the pan and you also, you also want that depth so that when you put the cheese around the outside uh, you won't have it overflowing in the, into the oven and burning. So this tray is, is really the only piece of equipment that you need that you wouldn't normally have in your kitchen. You can order those online and that's where I found this one and occasionally you'll see them in bakers, distributors, warehouses. So look for a 12 by 17 sheet pan to make this pizza. Now let's get started by talking about dough ingredients for this pizza as well. Uh, what we have here are six simple ingredients. We've got 409 grams of bread flour. Now bread flour has a little bit lower protein and it has a different flavor as well. And it gives this pizza kind of a unique taste. So we've got bread flour here. Again, that's 409 grams. We've got 274 grams of water. So this will be added to the flour, of course. Um, we've got about 8 or 10 grams of salt and 8 to 10 grams of sugar and a very small amount of olive oil. This is 4 grams of olive oil and you can use an entire packet of instant dry yeast for this recipe as well. Now I also have here a half cup of peanut oil. The peanut oil is not for in the dough, it actually goes into the tray uh, and that's so that the pizza actually gets fried on the bottom of the crust and it makes a delicious flavor. But we're going to just set this aside for now. Wanted to mention though that that's about a half cup, just enough to cover the entire bottom of the pan and I'll show you that when we get to that step. Okay, so let's begin by first adding the dry ingredients. We'll just go ahead and put all of our bread flour into our mixing bowl. And we'll add next our sugar and salt. And then we'll add our packet of yeast. And our water. Lastly, that small amount of olive oil. And we'll go ahead and begin to combine those ingredients. You want to mix this dough for four to five minutes on low speed until all of the ingredients have completely combined. This is a somewhat wetter dough so when you begin to see it forming all together you can stop the mixer. And before we remove our dough from the dough bowl we're going to prepare our pan. So I'll take that peanut oil that we had reserved for this step. I'll just, this is a half cup, but I'm not going to pour all of it in there. I'll pour about a quarter cup in there at first and just get that bottom nice and coated. Go ahead and add the rest. You may not need that whole half cup, which is why I'm taking these. You don't want too much oil in the bottom because 
it will soak into the crust and it will be a little too greasy. So you just want enough that the entire bottom of the pizza pan is coated. You shouldn't be able to see any part of the surface that's not coated in oil. So, so it's just about two thirds cup. I didn't need that whole half cup. Right. Next we'll get our dough ball out of our mixer. And it is a wetter dough, so it'll be a little bit hard to handle, might stick to your fingers a bit, but that's okay. Um, but it should be ready to be placed in the pan. You don't have to stretch it or really do anything at this point. We're going to allow it to rise right in the pan for this first step. Lay that in there. And you can press it down a bit. If you need to dip your fingers in the oil, it's okay to coat the top of the dough with oil lightly as you're forming this dough ball in the pan. And at this point, all we're trying to do is just flatten it out a little bit. It's going to be pulling back on you. That's completely normal. This will change throughout the process of rising. We're just smashing it down a little bit at this point so that it's laid in the bottom of the pan there. Kind of keep it oblong a little bit so that uh, it will be spread evenly in the rectangular pan. And, and at this point, we're going to let this begin to rise. Uh, but first we'll cover it with some, some cellophane and then put it in a dark, warm place to rise. So I'll go ahead and take a couple of sheets of plastic wrap. And cover. that pizza and we'll put it in a warm dark place to rise for a little while. Now every hour or so you want to check on this dough to make sure that it's rising well and in about two hours we're actually going to press it all the way out into the bottom of the pan and once that is stretched so that it's covering the entire bottom of the pan we allow it to rise one more time usually takes another hour and a half or two hours until you see a nice fluffy crust that fills the entire bottom of the pan. So normally what I do is I begin this process four hours or so before I plan to bake the pizza and I uh, allow it to rise in the pan throughout the day. What you could also do is allow it to rise in the refrigerator overnight and you'll still get a nice filled pan uh, after you have this initial rise. You want to stretch it out as best you can and then allow it to rise and it will naturally fill the pan overnight uh, usually. But the trick is allowing that to completely fill the pan and then rise within the pan. You should get a nice, almost an inch tall uh, pizza crust out of that. So we'll check in on this pizza when the rise process is complete. Here we've, uh, it's been rising for a little while and we pressed that dough down in. We're pressing that dough down into the corners as best we can. And we're going to allow that to rise. We'll allow that to rise in the tray for another couple of hours. Now let's talk about ingredients for this pizza recipe. We really don't need many because we're only making a cheese pizza this time. But you can put your favorite toppings on top and include them. I just like it plain just the way it is. It's got tons of flavor and it's an extra unique recipe. So we're going to need some of our tomatoes. Now I use Escalon 6-in-1 just like the tomatoes that I've used in my other recipes for my traditional pizza sauce. But this time I'm not adding anything to the sauce at all. So we have these raw tomatoes here. We have whole milk, mozzarella cheese in block form which we're going to shred. And we have Vermont sharp cheddar, white cheddar cheese that's going to also be shredded and added to the top of that pizza. And this is the, the cheese that makes this pizza unique. Really that's it. The combination of those two cheeses and fresh tomatoes on top of a light airy crust give it a really unique flavor. So let's take a look at how we put this pizza together. The first thing we'll do is grate our cheeses. We're 
We're going to use a lot of cheese on this pizza because it's a pretty large pie. So I'll begin with my mozzarella. I'm going to use almost a half a block of mozzarella cheese. Now we'll add to that some of the sharp cheddar. And we'll go ahead and blend that together by hand. Okay, so there's our cheese and that's ready to be set aside. And then just a pinch of sea salt goes on top of this pizza as well. Okay, so here is our pizza dough that we've been having ready for rising throughout the day. And we checked on it a couple of times. And you can see it's risen in the tray really nicely. As you can see, it's a nice, light, airy, lots of bubbles. And we, when we sauce this pizza, we want to be careful not to press down too much on that dough to keep that light, airy texture inside the dough when it bakes. Sometimes people will actually bake the pizza just like this for half of the amount of time just to firm up that dough. And then they top it and then melt the toppings at the end. But we're going to go ahead and, and do it all at once in one step. If you have trouble with your dough, uh, not staying firm, that might be an option for you to try. Okay, so a lot of the flavor of this pizza depends on the tomatoes, so make sure you use really good tomatoes. We're using Escalon 6-in-1 tomatoes here, and this is going to be a great tomato flavor uh, on top of this pizza. I'm just going to really lightly spread this sauce over the top of this pizza. I'm being very gentle here. I don't want too much weight of sauce on any one place on the pie. Because I don't want it to shrink the dough down. You can go pretty close to the edge with the sauce on this pizza. And that's mainly because we're going to put a lot of cheese on top. Okay, so our sauce is down. Now this again is just basic tomatoes. Um, one of the famous pizzerias in Scranton is called Victory Pig. And they actually have small diced onions in the sauce. And I've tried that and it's gotten pretty close to the original recipe, according to people who grew up there. Uh, but it is a powerful flavor, so you can choose whether you include those on top of your sauce or not. Uh, we will put a small pinch of sea salt on this pizza. You don't need a lot because the cheddar cheese is going to have a lot of a salty flavor. But we'll just, just put a pinch of salt. On there and we're ready to cheese this pizza. Now make sure you get lots of cheese along the edge because like a Detroit style pizza that cheese will melt and become crispy along the edges. It almost burns a little bit along the edges giving the edge crust pizza slices a really delicious flavor. So it's completely okay to go right up against the edge of the pan with your cheese. So we have the sauce and cheese down on our pizza and if you like, as I mentioned, you could put additional toppings on the pizza at this point, but this pizza is ready to go into our oven. We'll bake this pizza at 425 degrees for about 15 minutes. I do check on this pizza because these pans have a tendency to be a little touchy. So once it firms up, I'll be checking the bottom just periodically to make sure that nothing's burning. You do want to wait until the oil comes fully to temperature and begins to boil and fry the bottom of that crust. Um, so watch that you don't check the pizza before you hear that sizzling. Okay, our old forge style pizza is ready to be cut and served. So here I'm going to place it. Again, we'll need our pan grips to get this out. You can just see how that pizza is wonderfully fried on the bottom. Should come out nice and easy. 
And I like to set this pizza on parchment paper. Man, that looks delicious. And you just simply cut this in squares. And you can hear the sound of that crunch as this pizza has been fried in peanut oil. And there we go. Our Old Forge style pizza. You can see the edges have this delicious cheese rim that's been crisp and crunchy burned on there. And the bottom of that has a really nice fried bottom. This is absolutely fantastic tasting pizza. It's light and airy and has a delicious flavor. So that's it for our Old Forge style pizza. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Pizza Class.